Hey guys, so in this week's video, we are going to show you our personal top favorite camping spots here in Florida as of now. Right. So if you find this video interesting and you're new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell. And give us a thumbs up. Yep. And don't forget to stay tuned at the end of the video. Yeah, we have a really special thing to show you at the end. <laughs> well, we got a little surprise, so, yeah. yep. All right, so we're gonna start here at number five, and this is in St. Petersburg, Florida. It is Fort DeSoto Campground and State Park. Now, it is a little tough getting a camping spot here if you're trying to do it last minute, unless you just happen to get lucky and get a walk-up site. You're better off trying to book this campground a little ways out if you know you're gonna be in the area. The campground is one of our favorites because the sites are fairly private. There's really a good amount of trees and foliage between the campsites, so you don't feel like your neighbor is like in the campsite with you. They have three sections in this campground. One is for RV camping with pets, one is for RV camping without pets, and one is for tent camping. Being here at Fort DeSoto, it also has some of the best beaches in Florida and you're close to St. Petersburg in the downtown area. So if you choose to go out for dinner and drinks, it's really handy. Now one of the other great, great features of this park is you will get to go into the park of Fort DeSoto itself with your pass and they have a great, great dog beach here. And while you're in there, it's always fun to check out the fort and learn a little bit about the history of Fort DeSoto and how it came to be. And the nightly rates here will range anywhere from 33 and change to about 45 and change depending on what sites you get and what time of year. So coming in at number four is the town of Dunellen and Rainbow Springs Campground. This is another state park here in Florida and it's another highly sought after state park. And I would suggest, again, like with Fort DeSoto, if you're planning on visiting Rainbow Springs, I would definitely try to book it a few months out in advance. They do offer a certain number of walk-up sites, as pretty much all the state parks that I know of do here in Florida. But we would rather know when we arrive there, especially after driving a couple hours, that we're guaranteed a spot. It's kind of scary just to drive in and not know if you're going to get a spot and you're going to have to go try to find someplace else. The camp spots are nice and private. The, they're spread out. You're not right on top of your neighbor for the most part. And some of them do offer a full hookup. They actually have sewer on a couple of the sites that we've seen and one of the sites that we stayed at. So that's a nice little bonus because most state parks that we've stayed in do not have a sewer hookup and you have to go to the dump station. That was one of the reasons why we bought the Camco tote tank. Now this trip will hold special place in our heart because it was uh, our first time camping with our new Jayco Whitehawk. But the reason everybody comes to Rainbow Springs, I would say, would be to get in the Rainbow River. They offer tubing here. They will... Uh, you can drive and park your car and they will uh, shuttle you to and from it as you they take you to the head springs and let you float down the river. And one piece of advice I would offer is if you launch your kayak or canoe at the campground itself, go right towards the head springs and fight the current going that way. That way when you're coming back to get out of the water, you're flowing with the current and you're not going to wear yourself out. Now the water here is absolutely crystal clear. I mean, you can see everything, and turtles and fish. It just, uh, it was a dream for Nikki, our dog, because she just loves fish, and she just absolutely loves the Rainbow River, as you can tell. Definitely a place you would want to see if you are in the Dunellen area of Florida. And the campground rates start around $30 per night, and they do offer RV and tent camping. So this is definitely... Definitely one you need to put on your list. All right, so coming in at number three is Cedar Key, Florida, and the Cedar Key RV Resort 
and the Shell Mound Campground because we have stayed at, actually we've stayed at three campsites here in Cedar Key as we've stayed here quite a few times as you can guess. We've actually stayed at uh, Sunset Isle Campground which was the first time we stayed there which was over Thanksgiving like a couple three years ago. But Cedar Key RV Resort is where we've stayed a couple times and Shell Mound we've stayed a couple times. Now Cedar Key RV Resort is what it is. It's a resort. It has a pool. It has paved parking pads, which is really nice. And Shell Mound is more primitive and it is like kind of like a state park, I think. Now one of the cool things here in Cedar Key is if you take a kayak or a boat ride over to Atsina Odi Key, there is some graveyard ruins over here from where people lived back in the day and there was two pencil factories where pretty much the world's supply of pencil wood was made back in the late 1800s. Now, we encountered mosquitoes here so bad that we could not really enjoy this. We basically walked through and filmed as quickly as we could. Now, we would like to go back at a time of year where the mosquitoes were not so bad. Now, this is at Shell Mound. Shell Mound is really a neat little place with a neat little history about the Native Americans who lived here and how Shell Mound was created. It was created from them eating the shells from the shellfish and the bones of the fish and it was basically their garbage dump and this mound over thousands of years was created from it. Now we just love Cedar Key. Cedar Key has such a very cool old fishing village laid back vibe. It's very small. There's not much really to the town but if you love seafood it's definitely something for the seafood lover we go to the big deck bar almost every time because it's dog friendly and we eat uh, the peel and eat shrimp most of the time it's a very artsy town and it is known for sunsets here some of the sunsets you will get in cedar key are just second to none i would say now you can kind of see the Cedar Key RV Resort that we've stayed at a couple times and how nice it is with the nice paved roads and the paved parking pads. And they have a pool and uh, all the amenities you could want. I believe on average we spend about $45 to $50 a night at this resort. This town is full of art and is full of good seafood and some of the most gorgeous sunsets you'll ever see. And over at Shell Mound Campground you can get just electric or you can get electric with water and they're dirt cheap like $16 a night so definitely this is one I would highly suggest that if you're going to be in the west coast of Florida you got to check out Cedar Key absolutely beautiful and at number two is Key West Florida and Boyd's Key West Campground now one of the great things about Boyd's Campground is that it is on Stock Island which is right next to Key West you're like four miles from downtown Duval Street in the main part of Key West. The campground is pretty tight. You're not going to get a lot of privacy here, obviously. Space is at a premium in the Keys. And it is the most pricey campground that we've ever stayed at, at over $100 a night. And depending on what time of year you come, like Fantasy Fest or during some of the holidays, like Fantasy Fest, I know they have a five-night minimum and it's I believe around hundred and thirty five hundred and forty dollars a night so that's quite pricey especially since you have to pay for five nights but we do love the Keys and Key West has just a different kind of laid-back vibe that we don't feel anywhere else it uh, it's one of the places that if it weren't so hot in the summertime we would probably consider maybe like retiring there but the summer heat there, we were there in July the first time we went and it was so brutal that we just, uh, I don't think I could live there year round. But it has a lot of cool attractions to see as we just went past the Hemingway house and you get to see where Ernest Hemingway lived for a while and you go to some of these old bars like Sloppy Joe's and Captain Tony's and Hog's Breath and Duval Street is definitely very touristy but it is also very rich in history as well. 
You walk into Captain Tony's saloon here, and this is actually the original Sloppy Joe's, and that's where Ernest Hemingway used to hang out. And Mallory Square during sunset is always really entertaining as they have street performers, and uh, it's a great place to catch a uh, Key West sunset. On a side note, I've lived here since 87, and Allie's lived here since 95, and neither one of us had been to the Keys until 2015, and now we've been several times, and we can't get enough now. So definitely got to put this one on the list. And of course, at number one, St. Augustine and Anastasia Island State Park Campground. Now we have stayed at Anastasia Island State Park a couple times, and I'm gonna go back and say the same thing I said about this park is what I said about Fort DeSoto and Rainbow Springs. Very, very highly sought after state park. Um, you gotta book it out in advance, or you've gotta use like a website like Wandering Labs to put in a request and if anybody cancels you'll get notified that's the way we've done it a couple times and it works pretty good but one thing I'll say about this campground is it's nice and far back in here it's secluded it's quiet it's very private a lot of trees between the campsites a little tight at times so if you got a big rig I would just keep that in mind now we just love St. Augustine our first trip here was me and Allie's first trip together anywhere as we first started dating and that was in August of 2006 we'd started dating in June of 2006 and for some reason I don't even know why we decided to go to St. Augustine I know it was a favorite place for my sister to go when she lived in Jacksonville but we did and we fell in love with it um, the history here is just uh, if you love history wow it's just probably the best place I would have to say and just a short drive over to Volano Beach is a, one of the best dog-friendly beaches here, too. One of Nikki's favorite places, for sure. There's some really good restaurants here that we love to go to every time. There's some history with uh, the old jail and a man named Charles Powell, or Charlie Powell, who was hung there, which is kind of funny, seeing as hell that's my name. The old city gates. Nikki always likes to act like she sees something at the city gates which is kind of weird because there's supposed to be a ghost of a little girl there scarlet o'hara's is another favorite place for us to go get an adult beverage and the fort is a really cool place to see while you're there and remember at the beginning of the video we said to stay tuned to the end of the video for a special little uh, surprise well the surprise is this is where we got engaged back in 2007 on june 30th and me being the dork that I am, I videotaped it. And here it is. My, hand, my hands are all sandy now. Oh, great. That's not going to be good. Should I go wash them off? Yeah. If you are new to our channel, and <laughs> I can't stop laughing now. <laughs> hang, woo, hang on.